it looks like eight of our nine members are present, which is a quorum, so I'd entertain a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then we'll still do a roll call of the voting members. Oh. And we'll start with our most recent arrival. <laughs> no worries. Oh, are you here? I am present. Wonderful. Shane Cunningham, present. Chuck Bill. John Farrar. Damien Jesperson. Chase Mitchell. Josephine Antico. Chris Happy. Uh, Jerry DeMille. All right. And in the audience, we have uh, Leslie, who is from the Board of Selectmen. I don't know if you want to talk to us today or you're just here for the fun of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, the next order of business is the review and approval of the October 16th meeting minutes. I would accept a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're getting right through it. You'll be in plenty of time for the dentist. <laughs> uh, review of the council members' participation in COA events. Uh, I think we started with Jerry last time, so Susan, why don't we start down with you again? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I wasn't listening. I was trying to get the first part of the notes. Um, ah. Sorry, it was a rough morning. Um, no worries, Stacey. Happened happen to all of us. Uh, we're reviewing what we have been able to do or get people to attend for COA events. Okay. Um, I have not been able to do anything, unfortunately. Um, my schedule has just been too busy. <laughs> I know the feeling. So, um, no worries. I'll try. I'll care. I mean, I'm impressed that as many people are attending as there are. All right. I did uh, the veterans luncheon and I did the Thanksgiving luncheon and uh, both were well received and well attended. So. Excellent. I missed both sadly. Work got in the way. It does that sometimes. <clears throat> uh, the same. I attended the uh, Thanksgiving feast as well as the veterans luncheon. Very good. I have. Uh, attended a couple, dropped into a couple things at the COA, sometimes just because I conveniently happened to have to go and sign papers or meet with Cindy. Uh, saw the watercoloring class where everyone was disparaging their work, but I thought things looked pretty <laughs> they good. They came out great though. <laughs> so uh, a lot of uh, heavy self-criticism, but everyone seemed to be having a great time. and. Uh, been having a few meetings here and there about this. Been trying to convince my parents to attend the yoga class. I have not succeeded yet, but uh, you know, keeping on the pressure to get people to to the events that I think they would uh, enjoy. Let's see, I took advantage of uh, the blood uh, pressure clinic uh, on the first Monday of the month, which uh, was good, and I'm doing my best to attend the Tuesday uh, Mahjong games. I haven't made every one every week, but uh, I am there when I can be. Excellent. I'm a volunteer at the Council on Aging, so I'm intimately involved with all the things that they do there, uh, especially trying to encourage people who walk by to join the Council on Aging, because they say, this is old people. I say, well, I'm older than most of the people here, so I guess it's not. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I, I think I've encouraged some people. They are reluctant sometimes, and I don't know why, like your parents are reluctant. You know, it's just, it's just that maybe we should call it the Council on Youth, and then they would show up. <laughs> That's a good idea. Rejuvenation. Council on Rejuvenation. It's true. We have to do a little bit of a, a perception adjustment out there. <laughs> well, yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, other than teach yoga, and I went to an occasional pickleball, I can say that's about it. And I think the other has got the best of the pickleball. So now waiting for those ping pong tables to be set up. <laughs> um, I'm pretty involved. I went to game night, travel chef, craft beer, Thanksgiving luncheon, luncheon and um, I will happy to say that my other part 
my spouse is now in the process of setting up a ping pong table. <laughs> poor Cindy had a lot of problems with those ping pong tables. Uh, they're pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what he said. He needs a lot of help. And the other thing I'd like to say is I couldn't go to the uh, veterans because we were in Georgia. But at the Thanksgiving luncheon, I'd like everybody to know that Janine here actually was serving at the Thanksgiving luncheon. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm at the tail end. I'm the one who gets to put in the sweep all the floor and, you know, and do all that stuff. That's I'm the full sweep, but we all help out. You do. Everybody's got a job. Sure do. Mm -hmm. We all manage. Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys for everything you have been able to do, and uh, you know, the more we can do, the more easily I think we'll be able to convince the town that the Council on Aging deserves uh, its own space, which I think, you know. Getting the numbers up and getting people to see all of the good stuff that is accomplished here is vital for uh, making that sale to the town. Because at first we have to convince the selectmen, and then we have to help them shepherd it through the town. So we have a lot of work coming up with that, and I think it is based on the fact that the Council on Aging actually serves the populace of the town. So, with that said, Let's go to our ballot. <clears throat> so according to the um, charge that we have, um, we are selecting two people from this group to be on this ad hoc committee. So every one of your names is on here. If you can please vote for two people. Cindy's doing that. Is there any new <coughs> business that anyone would like to discuss or talk about? I'm not sure if it qualifies for new business, but um, I've made enormous effort to connect with the prime movers over at uh, Governors regarding winter pickleball, and the response has been zero. Uh, yeah. I was there for the uh, Monday gathering for the new water center on the river and mm. stopped in uh, at the individual's office and it was a bit of a semester break so there was nobody there to take my audience and uh, I continue and I've, I've gone to two of the faculty members to bring a back a back to a push mm -hmm. and see if that helps they're uh, sometimes extremely helpful and sometimes very closed over there well, they have two centers. They have the alumni in Pesca Salida. Uh, and I indicated to the individual in authority that um, the hours would be roughly arrival at 9.30 to set up and gone by 11.30 kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't interfere with the classroom schedule. Nope. But it, it could come down to the liability and all the aspects that that implies. It's also going to be a little bit difficult for us because yeah. I have to go to the field house to collect the equipment, bring it over to... Well, we could do that the night before. What days? Uh, you I told her I told her Wednesday and Thursday at best. Tuesdays and Thursdays. I, I what mean, we did I told her Tuesdays yeah. and Thursdays. But now, because pickleball ends this week, um, ping pong will be in that place, and it'll actually be longer. From 9 mm -hmm. to 1 is what we reserved the field house for. For the ping pong. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Just because there's only two tables I can fit in there in order to get as many people to Rotation participate. Through, right? yeah. Yeah. And it would be the same crowd. They'd be competing, wouldn't they? Maybe more people. Necessarily. Different people. Never know. No. Yeah, not Never necessarily. Know. Yeah. A lot of them are interested in it. Yeah. In, in ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I have a tie. So I have five for you, Damon. Uh, the tie is Joyce and uh, John Ferrara. I, I think I'm going to sit, I'm going to put my my vote for Joyce. Oh no, I'm going to. Put <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the reason being is, I mean, you wrote the book on this in 2020, mm -hmm. and I, I think that you're you're probably primed and ready to do the work faster and better than I. Uh, no, I would not say that, John. You have lots of contacts around, and you are very well uh, versed on. <clears throat> More, more so than I am. At the time I was doing the study, it was during COVID, and uh, it was just reading other towns and what they were doing and putting together <laughs> what we didn't have and what other towns had and what a dire situation we were in. Mm -hmm. So I really would much prefer that you take it if you would. <laughs> What's the next one down? Okay, I'll, I'll accept it. It is the, I, I, my vote went to these two. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. Proximity. <clears throat> All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is the new COA van tour and ride. So do you want to talk about that? So the new van is here. Um, we've taken it out already to uh, a couple of, uh, we had medical appointments, we had shopping, uh, Thanksgiving luncheon. Uh, a few of our select board members, we took them for a ride to give them an idea. Uh, old van versus new van. And I think it was great. Good. Um, but we wanted to invite all of you to take a ride, if you're interested. And I can schedule a time with our van driver when he's available, if you'd like to just get in for a quick ride. It wasn't long, maybe. 15 minutes? No, we took the old van around the, the Park old lot, yeah. and then we went up to Newburyport and then came back again. So we got to feel it on the highway. Um, it's got a lot of features that are going to make it so much easier for the people that are going to get the most use out of it. Um, and it's real comfortable. It's, um, it's more quiet even than the other one when we were on the highway. It's got nice big windows in it. Um, Oh, just seat belts. Oh yeah. Seat belts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Shoulder. Okay. Yep. Seat belts. Belts. Not just waist belts. Yeah. That's good. Mm. Auto yeah. lives in my neighborhood. She's always yeah. offering me. It'll be easier for you guys. No. When, you know, whoever takes it. Um, it's like the whole grocery thing was like yeah. that was like the number one on the list. I thought instead of your stuff being in the back, especially where it gets warm in the back, you'll come right in. Your groceries can go right there or your walkers, or your wheelchair can go right in there. It's, 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 it was well thought out. Great. Excellent. And do you, are you going to talk to Otto? I can talk to Otto, but we can probably do, a, uh, if a Monday works for people, I can mm -hmm. work on doing a Monday. I just need to ask him uh, for sure that that's work. I think since we all come on uh, Monday, yeah, yeah, that after, makes sense. maybe tie it to our next meeting. Asking for sure. All right. Mr. Chair, question on the old van. Was that part of trade in? No, um, so I have to have that appraised. I'm in the process of getting that done now. Right. And then My it will be is, sent to auction. Should we keep it as a backup for, say, a extended period of time until we're sure the new van is perfect and wrinkle free? So I've done that. We've had the new van for a bit and I've used it. Uh, I wanted to have it wrapped. We wanted yeah. to take it out for a couple of rides to make sure everything was good. Um, so I've had it in hand for probably about two months now. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. Would there be any event or an emergency we would need both? I've only ever had one van, so. Got it. So just throwing yeah. the question out there, that's all. Everybody, yeah. what are your ideas yeah. on it? Should we get rid of it? Should we, you know? Um, Selectman's choice, actually, if I remember yeah, correctly, I they that, put it up for surplus, have to vote it to surplus, and then it goes up to bid. But where we already own it, is there another um, department that could use something like that? I don't know. Should we look in on it, or should we just 
I think we can, you know, as we have a representative from the select board here, we can, it, I think it becomes theirs unless we have a present and burning need for a second van mm -hmm. for ourselves. And I think from what Cindy's saying, we don't need it, so I think okay. we, we right. let the town figure out if it has another use for it, and if not, they'll load it to surplus and it will get auctioned off and find another home. Yeah. Could I ask a question? I'm ignoring yeah. this. If that happens, what happens? Does that money for the van go back to the COA or no. does it go to the no. town? No. To the town. General fund, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't recall. Do you remember where it goes? For bids? No, for no, the, the town. Anything we sell, they sell the it. auction is general funds. Uh, goes in a free cash. Free cash. All proceeds doesn't come to us. Goes yeah. in free cash. Yeah. Oh, thank you. This yeah. van was also purchased with um, grant money. Um, mm -hmm. I believe the maximum amount that we the town would get back is five thousand dollars, depending on what it's appraised for. Mm -hmm. If it's appraised for less, we get less. But, um, so it's not a huge chunk of money that's coming back. Yes. But it is. I think it's always good to ask the question and see if there's another spot that it can be useful. I just don't know. I don't know that there is. So. Okay. I mean, I'm not even sure if it's possible if there's another town that could use it. Just throwing it out there, you know? Yeah. Think but I think it. they would have to bid on it, wouldn't they, at auction? We couldn't just, like, give it to another town. Not that I'm aware, but... That would be a, that, that would have to go to legal. I don't think we've ever tried to just give something to another town, except around Triton, and that we were not allowed to do because of the, the regional agreement. Um, so, but, you know, it's, it's a thought. It, it's a good thought, and the other area that a transportation can be useful as the veterans affairs. So I don't know if we want to reach out to them and see if they have a use for it. Because uh, if we, we can't decide where it goes, but if we know there's an interested party, there may be ways to get it to yeah. the interested party. Yeah, we can so, bring up the interest to the board of selectmen and say, hey, what are yeah. your thoughts? And that's the best we can do, so. Okay, Joyce, did you have a question? Um, I was just curious as to what year it is and how many miles it has on it. Uh, it's, I believe it's 2016. I want to say there's under 40,000 miles. Oh my gosh! I mean, that's a pretty uh, good deal for somebody. With I don't know what the van looks like underneath. That's a big part of the appraisal. Yeah. Like the weather and salt and whatnot up here. Yeah. Uh, that could be part of the. But there's things that can be done for that uh, now. Is this NHOU uh, uh, formula that you can have the van, the rust taken off? Not that we would do it, but the purchasers could certainly save it for years. Yes. I was told a lot of like contractors like vehicles yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can stand up and in. We so. deal. Are you, you're in connection with the VSO, the new, the new house captain there? Telephone call, see if they need them. I was over there a couple of days ago, and they've got there were two vans in the parking lot. I don't know whether one belonged to the town for other reasons, or both belonged to the VSO. Excuse me, officer. Veteran VSO. services. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but it just it's we're in a triune Georgetown, Ipswich, and Newbury. Is that correct? There's several towns in that. Yeah. And yeah. They're stationed in the town hall at Ipswich. There used to be two other Hamilton, one of them they pulled out. They pulled out to yeah. another area. Yes. Yeah. I think he has more than three towns. So I think you're right. Got quite a few. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's a good idea to see if we can find it a new home, but yeah. if not, it'll be really up to the selectmen in the end. Okay. All right. Any other comments on the van? Let's move on to the director's report. 
Okay, so uh, as Janine mentioned, the veterans luncheon was well attended. We had about 35 veterans and their spouses. Uh, again, many thanks to Mike Ringo and of the Rusty Can, who again donated lunch to yes. us. Um, we tried to pay this time, <laughs> and he wouldn't have it. So he's very, uh, him and his family are very supportive of veterans and uh, wanted to do this for us to put something on for our vets. So we appreciate that very much. Thanksgiving luncheon was also really well attended. I had, I believe, 77 people RSVP, oh but wow. we ended up serving about 65. Whether it was hospitalizations, wasn't feeling well that day, there was a bunch that dropped off, um, but we were ready for everybody. Um, but I think it was really well, uh, really well received. So thank you again for all your help, and you for your cleanup help. <laughs> and Bill, and we had uh, Dennis Kondracki, we had, um, Leslie Doyle is one of our regular volunteers downstairs. She also helped us with serving. We're, we're dependent on our volunteers. So, uh, Tina Kennedy is another great volunteer, so we really appreciate everybody's help. Uh, new veteran service officer, like John was saying, that's Steve Vaughn. Uh, there's a spot on him in the new newsletter. Uh, he'll be holding monthly office hours like the previous veteran service officer was doing. I know for sure his December hours are December 14th, right here in this room from 11.30 to 12.30. Um, I do have the final Did You Know flyer, if you want to take one and pass it down. This will go out, uh, actually it's on the select board agenda for tomorrow, I believe. Do you have a meeting tomorrow? Yes. Okay, so this is on their agenda. Oops. They have to approve this before it can go out in the tax bill. Uh, if they approve it, it will go out with the tax bills on uh, 1231. Um, I believe this is going to 3,400 households, 20 cents a copy, that is $680 out of our budget. So that's a big chunk of change for us. Um, so my thought is this is the one and only time I'll be able to afford to. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of money. That's, that's a theater program, that's half of a catering bill, that's, it's a <laughs> lot of money. So, um, but I think we get it out there and hopefully it stimulates some interest. Uh, oh, CLA directory, do you wanna take one of these? This is an updated list of everybody's contact information. Query, yep. uh, is, is it against town rules for citizenry uh, to make gifts to specific Elements of the town of Newbury, the village? Uh, no. My we used to get them all the time. Yeah, sure. So if citizens were to chip in and. Yeah, with the approval of the select board, yes. Okay. Mm. And you can, as with any giving, you can Jeez. always sticky to tailor it to, you can oh, say, yeah. for this, but I don't know that that is binding on the town. So if somebody were to write a personal check and ask that it contributed to the Council on Aging, there's, there's a possibility it could be diverted. Yes. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Okay. Can I you know. write it to the friends and ask that it be earmarked for that? Good question. I don't know. Yes. You can always, I mean, you can always donate. Uh, whether or not you can control how the donation is spent, I mean, even if you send it to the friends and said, I would like this to go towards providing for the annual, you know, if we do, if you wanted to do this annually, which is sort of where I sensed you were going with that, yeah. uh, they might listen to you and they might just put it into their general fund and... Well, with four terms on the select board, I saw an awful lot of donations come in front of us. Never once did I ever see it misappropriated. It yep. always went to where it was designated in the purpose because you'd be shooting yourself in the foot if you did that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, I'm yeah. just saying right. we can't, I can't guarantee that if yeah. John wrote a check and said <laughs> yeah. this is to do X, that it would yeah. actually get all the way through there. Um, we donated X amount of money for, um, we were thinking at the time it was a pool, a pool table and it was accepted, it was for the, directly to the Council on Aging. Ping pong table. Yeah, for a ping pong table. And um, I would encourage people to directly give it to the Council on Aging and then the, the select board announces it and then they thank you and they accept it. Mm -hmm. What happened is when we went and you know, went to the Council on Aging, 
um, Cindy is really good. She came to both of us and said, wow, I might need this for another cause. Is it okay? I mean, she was clear, very like, I, we said fine. As long as you got it, fine. Well, I will tell you too, in, in ter I can only speak to the council and agent, but if you put a letter with your donation mm -hmm. saying this is what I want it to be used for, um, I would use it for that specific purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the town accountant, I would work with the town accountant, it would go in a separate account specifically for that use. Mm -hmm. So for example, when the friends have given us donations, generally it is for a general use of programs. I can't use the, that funding for coffee paper or salaries for staff or things like that, but I can use it towards our theater programs or our catering for our events or things like, things like that. They had also donated money for the van. That went into a separate account from what my programming friends account is. So they do segregate, and then I can only submit bills for those particular uses. So this would be administrative and they wouldn't cover this? The friends? Yeah, probably not, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not under our GS, right? No. Yeah. And again, I think at the same time, if you give it directly to the council and agent, I don't know if we even said what it was for. But it, was a general it was a general donation. But, but they suggested what it was for. But the point is, if you give it to them directly, she can use it as best as she, because she's the head of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, any other questions about that? Or should we move on? No, okay. Good. So, the new newsletter is here. Um, some new things that we have uh, in this newsletter is a, um, <coughs> a program called Senior Feet. This woman is a registered nurse and a licensed medical pedicurist. We're going to start with medical pedicures in January. It's not a podiatrist, but it's not a pedicure like you'd get in a salon. There's no toenail polish or anything. It's basically, <laughs> a, it's a cleaning up. Um, something you would kind of go to in between appointments at your podiatrist. Um, so there's information in here about Barbara Ullman. She is the woman who is doing this. The cost is $30. It's paid directly to her. Um, and that is a reservation that's required. So we have a, her for a limited time from, I think it's 10 to 12. Our first uh, clinic is on January 31st. The second was on February 28th. I believe it's the last Wednesday of each month we're planning to do. Um, Next, we have a senior tea at Triton. So they have, Triton has a, uh, like a community liaison that we work with. She has worked with us to uh, get snow angels. Unfortunately, that program has not seen a lot of um, volunteers. So I only have four seniors that are getting a snow angel so mm -hmm. far. So I actually put that in the newsletter as well. If anyone knows of anyone who's willing or able to be a volunteer um, to shovel someone's snow, even if you have a neighbor who you know can't get out there uh, if you can look out for your neighbors uh, but if there's someone who's willing and able to be a volunteer we'd love to hear from that person but this um, this community liaison is uh, working with us as well on this senior tea so it is a program on Tuesday December 12th from 10 to 1130 at Triton in their library I believe um, so they'll be serving tea and some snacks the jazz band will perform the chorus will perform it's just a nice kind of intergenerational community service that they're doing. Uh, the Delvina Theatre Group will be doing a Christmas Carol on Monday, December 18th at 1 o'clock. That uh, theatre group is um, very animated, well attended. They, uh, they do a great Excellent. job. So this uh, performance will have all three performers. Sometimes it's a one-woman show, sometimes it's only two of them, but this one is all three. Um, and we will have popcorn and candy. It'll be a good time. Where's the performance? Uh, downstairs, right here in our space. Game nights are December 5th, which I believe is next week. It is. Um, mm -hmm. And then Tuesday, December 30th, dinner and dessert are served for those. Our next tech class with Kevin is in January, Wednesday, January 24th at 2 p.m. His topic will be taking, taking and organizing photos on your iPhone and iPad. So he started off with kind of a basic overview of your iPhone and iPad, then he went to, I think it was calendar management, and now he's talking about photos. So each time we have a specific topic um, that we review. Watercolor class, we have Wednesday, December 6th, and Wednesday, January 24th. 
Um, we are making homemade holiday cards on Thursday, December 7th. Our holiday luncheon is Wednesday, December 13th. That's at PETA Hall. Um, that one is a must register for, uh, similar to Thanksgiving. We're also asking that people register themselves. We got a lot of, oh, I'm signing up my friend. And then the friend didn't come. Uh, so we want to make sure that people are signing up. Um, that they're it was intentional. Right. Um, the other thing is, at this point, because we weren't doing this before, but at this point we kind of have to, uh, Newbury residents will take priority. So if someone calls from out of town, we will put them on a wait list. If I have enough room, uh, about a week out, then we can go to the wait list for people from out of town. Um, but I don't want to say no to anyone from Newbury. Traveling Chefs are December 7th, which is a carving station of turkey and roast beef, mashed potatoes, green beans. Thursday, January 11th will be clamor corn chowder in a bread bowl and a salad. Those are both, uh, I know we've done the clam and corn chowder in the bread bowl before. That was really well mm -hmm. attended. Um, people really liked that. So this here? is the first time we've done the carving station. I'm is that sorry. here? Yes, downstairs, yep. Um, and then coming in January, beginning January 9th is ping pong. So that's Tuesdays and Thursdays from nine to one. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are in need of snow angels, so again, if anyone knows anyone, it's basically clearing off someone's walkway, their stairs to their home, um, a path to their heating source, whether it's their wood pile or their oil tank or anything like that. Um, it's not shoveling or plowing a driveway, it's simply access, uh, emergency access for people to get in and out of their home. If you can help with stuffing and folding newsletters, we'll be doing that today and tomorrow. Our office is closed on Monday, December 25th for Christmas, Monday, January 1st for New Year's, and Monday, January 15th for Martin Luther King Day. Those are all listed on the newsletter. Uh, again, I will do another plug for NEAT. We're always in need of volunteers for the NEAT program. We are highly dependent on that program. Um, if we have someone who's got a local medical appointment and it's not during a time that we have another scheduled van uh, trip, we certainly take people in the van to medical appointments locally. Uh, we're not going into Boston, and the NEAT program is hugely helpful where we have people, many people, need to go to appointments in Boston. Um, and the NEAT program has been a lifesaver for many of them. So if you know anyone who's looking for a volunteer opportunity, let us know, connect us with them, we will hook them up with the NEAT program. Um, open enrollment for Medicare ends on December 7th. Our Shine counselor is still available if people need to speak with him. There's a plan comparison form you get from us. Uh, you fill that out, we send it over to him, <coughs> puts a call out to you, tries to answer your questions over the phone. If he needs to, he'll meet in person. If that doesn't work for anybody, you can always call 1-800-MEDICARE, but I will tell you we're close to the end of open enrollment. Um, I believe 1-800-MEDICARE is a 24-hour line, but it's tough now at the end. You know, every, all, people waited till the end and now everybody's calling money for Medicare. So we do have a little bit of time left. If people are interested, you can hook them up with our Shine counselor. Um, but if I have 15 people call me today, he's probably not gonna be able to get all 15 by next week. <coughs> and finally, IT is still working on the phone lines um, for us. There is, hopefully sooner than later, we'll be call our line and we will pick it up <laughs> instead of going through the town hall. But I do know that Jonathan made a change so that when you dial our number and you hear the recording saying thank you for calling the town of Newbury, if you just dial the number three, you'll connect to us. If you just still dial the extension 484, it still works. Um, but in an effort to make it a little bit easier for folks, we're the third list on the menu. And he says to reach the council on aging, press three. So, but. Um, they are working on that to fix it so that you dial our number, you get us direct. Yeah. That's it. That's a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now we're back at new business again, although we already touched on that. Does anyone else have anything they would like to discuss? <laughs> Leslie, did you have anything you would like to put before the board? Or? No, I don't. All right. Uh, we, I'd Can like I say one quick one? Yep. All right. Paula Burke was the report council on aging. She mm -hmm. helped us quite a bit. She's now retired. 
Should we send a letter of thanks to her? Just for your help? I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's, I'm sorry to say that again. Paula Burke uh -huh. was Newburyport Council on yep. Aging for quite a while. She helped us out on a few things. She did? You know, so I was just wondering if we should send a letter of happy retirement. That's all. Janine, do you know about that? Or? No. No? Oh, okay. All right. But you do. Yep. She yeah. was there for many, many years. And, you know, just I thought I'd throw it out there, that's all. You know, just that's a, a gesture idea. of kindness. It certainly can't hurt. Um, Sorry. Who's a replacement? Okay. You know who a replacement is? Yeah, they announced it in there. It's in the it's newspaper. Like yeah, and it's in the newspaper yeah, also. But I can get headline daily news about four or five weeks ago. Yeah. So. I certainly don't have any objections to it. Um, so I'd entertain a motion. A motion to write a letter to Paul Burke for a happy retirement and uh, best wishes. Is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> All those in favor? Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, aye. Aye. I just have uh, one question mm -hmm. about the friends. Has there been any meeting uh, with them? There is a that meeting coming up in December. In December. Mm -hmm. okay. I want to say it's December yeah, 12th. Yeah, that, that Tuesday? December 12th. Let me just okay. double check for you. December 12th, Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the Council on Aging. And you and Damon will be at I am. I think you're traveling. I am away. December 10th to the 15th. So if you want to attend in my place, that would be great. Yep. And if you don't, I'll try to zoom in. We can set up a Zoom. Well, if you can be there and set up a Zoom, that, that would be better. But if you can't, uh, it will be <coughs> challenging for me. All right. Uh, I'll attend. <clears throat> there are. I believe four people that are interested in joining the friends who will be there. Okay. All are very um, involved in the Council on Aging. Oh, wonderful. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Good to know. I'm sure you all got the letter. No. You didn't get it. I didn't get it. No, I still got one. I didn't. No, you didn't get the I didn't. He got it just to him. Hmm. Um, and the next thing I'd like to do is establish our next meeting. I don't know if it is a uh, time that works for everyone. We could take December off if it is necessary with people's holiday travel and things like that. So uh, I propose the 18th, but that is getting close to Christmas. So. Uh, I'd entertain a motion and then we can discuss if that works or if people are away or things so like that. So moved. Second. So, December 18th work for folks? Is it a bad time, a good time? It's good right now. All right. Hearing no strenuous objection, uh, move to a vote. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And the next and final thing on the agenda is to adjourn. So, make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you.